today at 4.30. Dorothy, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Michael Siegerman? Here. David Jones? Here. Shane Bourgeois? Here. Trisha Byram? Here. David Lipscomb? Here. Hunter Patterson? Here. Cliff Tuttle? Here. Thank you. All right, so uh, we have our, on the agenda, the first thing we need to do is approve the minutes from the February 22nd meeting. Does anyone, has everyone reviewed the minutes? Does anybody have any notations, questions, or changes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes. We have a second. All in favor? Raise your hand. All right. Passes. We'll move on to number 2A, 1450 Red Cheryl Road, Miles Acres Preliminary and Final Plat 2021-008. Drew? Thank you. Good afternoon. Consideration on action of the preliminary and a final plat for Miles Acres subdivision being all or a, of a certain tract of land or parcel comprising of approximately 11.24 acres out of the William Francis survey number 146, abstract number 137, a 0.93 acre out of CCSD and RGNG Rye Company survey 1117, abstract 498, Kerr County, Texas more commonly known as 1450 Ranchero Road. The applicant is requesting to subdivide this uh, approximately 11 and a half acres into four tracks. There's a little tighter version. And you can see on the almost center of page, this is the ETJ running right down this first tract. ETJ is on this side. So actually lot two, three, and four are outside of the city's ETJ. So the, this plot will also be going through the county for their approval. Um, but otherwise, staff recommend plat with no conditions. Is there any questions from any of the commissioners? With no questions, do we have any? I'll make a motion to approve the plat and preliminary and final plat as presented. We have a motion. I'll second. Second. All in favor? And this is approved. We're going to move on to 3A, public hearing, consideration, and action to recommend an ordinance to change the zoning from R1 single family residential district to RM residential mixed district on approximately 3.12 acres out of the Crook Survey number 71, abstract A0114, and generally located at 327 Peterson Farm Road, 2020 086. You're going to present this to us. Do you want to give us the information before we open the public hearing? Quick rundown. Um, the applicant is not here. Um, he actually works offshore, so could not be here. So I'll give staff presentation and I can answer a couple questions on their plans, but any other detailed questions, we'll work through them as we can. Uh, this property is currently zoned R1, uh, just north of the airport on Pearson Farm Road. It is part of strategic catalyst area number 11, which encompasses the airport and the area surrounding that. Adjacent zoning to the south, of course, you have airport district with um, Mooney complex, the remainder of the airport. To the northeast, you have city property, which is a planned development district, originally zoned for the USDA if they would consider relocating there. So the PD is restricted to livestock and insect research. So anything coming in on that property will have to go through a zoning process. <clears throat> Based on the utilities, uh, there is this annex, or this was annexed in 2010 to gain access to city water. Uh, there is not currently access to city sewer. You can see that on the map there. There is city sewer at the airport and some ac access to city sewer on um, the highway on the other side of the creek. This property is currently served by septic system and will continue to be served as such. Uh, based on the underlying zoning going from R1 to RM, they're both residential zoning, so there's really no change to the comprehensive plan. Um, generally speaking, residential property near the airport would not be ideal land use. Since it's an existing home, they're looking to subdivide and add one manufactured home on the property. Um, roughly three, a little over three acres. Uh, so not talking any kind of dense, dense development, but again, based on utilities, it's pretty restricted as it is. Staff recommends a case for approval. I'd be pleased to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. 
I have a couple of questions. Anybody have any questions? Is there anyone here to speak for this, for the public hearing? You gotta go ahead and open. Yeah, we'll open, open the public close. hearing at 436. Open public hearing. Are there any callers? Any callers, anyone to speak on this? There are no callers. Callers. So we'll close the public hearing, 436. Uh, I went out and took a look at this property and I'm not, I know I looked at the right address. It's hard to tell 3.12 acres or whatever it is out there, but from what I could see on the property, there's a house. And then on the right side of the property in the back, there is another dwelling with a carport. Yep, there are currently two dwellings. And then there's another building behind the house towards the back. I don't know if that's a garage or. I think that's it? an accessory building, but I'm not sure what the yeah. actual use is. Um, what, if you can see this map, sorry, it's a little, little tighter, but um, the main house is near the address. There's mm -hmm. another structure back here, and I believe this is the second house. Okay, so are you property. telling me there's two houses on the property? There are currently two, and they're looking to subdivide another roughly half acre um, on this along the street frontage. So there'd be a total of three houses on three. So acres. the existing the existing zoning allows for two houses. It does not. It is grandfathered from original annexation okay. in 2010. So the existing, the remainder two, roughly two and a half acres will still be grandfathered with two units and then one new unit as part of their plan. And we had the discussion, I had the discussion with you before when this was supposed to be up last time about they want to put, when we change the zoning, that allows, it, it, allows it could be subdivided in the future and have three or four Potentially. manufactured housing. Yeah, right now the limitation is going to be based on the, the on-site septic facilities. Huh? Um, state law limits that to half acre with city water. So with three acres at most, they can subdivide into six lots. Given the configuration and access, I don't know that you could still get six lots out of it, but five at best. Uh, but their plan is to keep the two existing, remodel those and get those back in better shape than they currently are and add one new house, uh, one new manufactured home. Theoretically, if they decided to sell this property in a couple of years and someone wanted to make that into a mobile home park and they tore those houses down, right. they could subdivide the lots, provide the, the proper infrastructure and they turn could. it into a mobile home park. Is they that could. correct? Um, again, the, the, the biggest limitation is going to be the, um, if I can get back to the right map, access to the sewer line huh? um, that would be pretty significant infrastructure for just small development but assuming they could get access to the sewer they could come in with a okay. mobile home park that is correct but it would have to come correct it would have to, it would have to be approved everything they did would have to be approved right that was my question are there any other questions comments from the commissioners Okay, then if we have no comments, no other questions, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the zoning request. Yeah, we, I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. All right, the motion passes. So we're going to move on to the public hearing for the utility easement. HTCT private utility easement 2021-005. This public hearing consideration and action for a conditional use permit for a utility, private, or franchise on approximately 30 by 15 foot utility easement located in the south corner of Highway 173 and Loop 534 out of a 517 acre tract south made survey number 145 abstract 288. More commonly known as Kerrville Shriner Park, address 2385 Bandera Highway. You can see the map here. This is the far north corner of Shriner Park, just next to Papa John's at the intersection of 534 and Bandera Highway. There's the site plan. There's a little smaller, a little tighter aerial. You can see that slight red box. We're looking at putting it up close to the the front of the property for access to the utility lines that are in the right of way. And with that, I'll actually turn it over to Jerry. If there's any other questions? Uh, 
Hi, good afternoon. Jared Martin with Wellborn Engineering Surveying, uh, representing the surveying on this. Uh, you know, Hill Country Telephone, um, putting in some permanent infrastructure to expand their uh, utility capabilities. And uh, in order to put an easement on the property, they got to go through the conditional use permits. That's what we're submitting today. Can you please answer any questions you've got. Any, any, any questions? My question is uh, the uh, infrastructure is going to be put up. Is there is there a plan for fencing or camouflaging or anything to hide the view from the uh, from you know 173, or is it just going to be? I, I see the boxes here. Is that the way it's going to be? Uh, to my knowledge, that's the gist of what it's going to look like there yeah. on the corner there. Yeah. Um, there may be some fencing around the backside. There's some old wire fencing up front, um, but I don't know their exact plans on how much they need to do unless the city requires any kind of. Fencing. I was thinking more along the lines of it's just there. If someone decided they some kid decided they wanted to climb on it, or somebody wanted to go over there, is there any issues with that, Drew? Um, I'll, I'll address the fencing as far as the zoning code, um, but we don't have a requirement to fence it. Okay. I'm just thinking it's on city property. Right. The city has no liability if some kid goes over there and climbs up on top of that and falls and breaks his arm. That's something. Have you spoken to the... I have no issues with what they want to do. My only concern is this: since it is on, it's an easement on city property, is there, is there, does the city have liability if someone gets hurt over there? Um, a lot of that will be covered in the agreement with the city council. Okay. Uh, which is obviously another separate step sure. for the zoning piece. Okay, that answers my question. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion to approve. I'll second. I'll yeah. Second. Let me get one more thing real quick. Get back to our conditions. Staff is recommending two conditions okay. with approval for the conditional use permit. That it is tied to the site plan that was presented. And um, more just to repeat, there is a fencing requirement because it is in the front setback area that any fence over 30 inches is required to be wrought iron style fencing. Okay. Um, so they either have the option of not fencing it or going with a wrought iron style fence up to six feet tall. Um, that's consistent through every zoning district within the zoning code. Okay. Um, so just reiterating that, that if they choose to, it'll have, it cannot be a chain link fence. But, and then do again, we, the, the liability piece will be covered under the Do we have no one to address this? Do we need to open the public hearing? Go ahead and open the public hearing. But. So we'll open the public hearing at 4.43. Do we have any speakers or anybody on the phone? We have no callers. Close the public hearing at 4.44. Now we have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, this motion passes. We will move on to item. I, I, horse out of the barn, but I, just for clarity, you said they either have a choice of no fence at all or a, a wrought iron fence? That's correct. They can do a fence, any kind of solid fence, up to 30 inches so that it doesn't impact visibility along the street frontage. But otherwise, it would be a wrought iron fence up to six feet tall. I mean, I, I again go to the point that uh, we're not doing this here, but when this comes before city council, mm -hmm. will you speak to the potential liability if this thing is not enclosed? It'll either be through um, our parks department or um, possibly IT because they're working working okay. through this deal with them. But it, it'll be separate from the, the zoning piece. Yeah, because it sounds like to me you got a, a liability or safety or beauty. You know, yeah. I, I, I tend to agree. I mean, that was my, my first thought was exactly. that you have kids in that park all the time. That Well, it's not only that. It's right next to the pizza place. Right. right. you got access there, too. And it, is, it would be inside the existing fence at Kerrville Shire Park. Um, certainly not a security fence, but it is behind a fence. Right. It's, um, it's, it's behind a fence, but it's in the park. Right. That's correct. Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, 3C, 1517 East Main Street, a conditional use permit for accessory dwelling unit, PZ2021-1. <coughs> Drew? 
Request for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit on parts of Lot 2 and Lot 3, Block 84, J.A. Tybee Edition, more commonly known as 517 East Main Street. Uh, before I hand it over to the applicant, uh, just to kind of cover what the accessory dwelling unit is. Uh, so the R1 zoning district only allows for a single, a single family home, one, one unit on the property. The accessory dwelling unit is a secondary unit limited to 50% of the main area of the house, whether it's attached or detached. Um, but kind of just clarifying what the definition of accessory dwelling unit is. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Phillips. They do in the backup, but not in our Okay, but they haven't. Yes, they have. We haven't. Oh, perfect. Yes, ma'am. So, we just purchased this property, and I guess the previous owners had closed in the you know, garage. You may, you may be able to take, we could hear you. Okay. You're, you're spread out far enough. Good deal. The previous owners had closed who in. Who is she? I'm sorry. Yes, who are you, ma'am? Uh, the owner of 1517 East Main Street. And you're the owner, but what is your name, ma'am? Kristen Phillips. Oh, Kristen Phillips. Okay, thank you. So... We just purchased this property and the previous owners had closed in the garage area and so the square footage is really big and the two people that I tried to rent this out to were trying to see how many people they could pack into the four bedrooms and I think it just makes sense to like kind of do a garage apartment to the already existing closed in space. We're just adding two walls um, inside the house. So that's what we're doing with it. So in essence, what you want to do is make it where you can rent it out to two different people? Correct. Okay. Like a little one-bedroom studio mm -hmm. and then a three-two. <coughs> is there... We want to open this up to public hearing before we get into our questions. Let's yeah, open it up to the public hearing. We'll open up the public hearing at 448 to see if we have any speakers. Anybody on the line? There are no callers. Okay, we do have a letter. I'll read that. You want to read that? This is a letter we got this afternoon uh, from Mr. Larry Hunter. My name is Larry Hunter. I reside at 1604 Main Street, half block or less away from 1517 East Main Street. I'd like to voice my opposition to the zoning request. I've lived at the residence for over 30 years. From my perspective, this is not much different than the previous efforts to turn this home into a drug rehab facility. The city would be allowing an R1 single family residence or property to be converted into a multifamily property. At present, the only multifamily properties in our neighborhood, not counting those who ignored zoning laws or were grandfathered, such as the property across the street would be this property. This represents an encroachment on R1 neighborhoods that I believe should be stopped. As stated when pro I protested the efforts to turn this residence into a rehab facility of sorts, I have selfish reasons. I do not like to see property values negatively impact, which I feel would be a long-term impact by approving this request. I'm pretty sure we know that this request is being or this request for being made in River Hills, Comanche Trace, or other high-value neighborhoods. It would never see the light of day, as my neighborhood represents middle to lower class and perhaps lower income residents. I'm a one of the. I'm sure the owner feels that he will have a little impact. No doubt his staff will support this request as it sort of fits into the new long-term goal of increasing housing density by reducing lot sizes and similar approaches as an effort to alleviate temporary housing shortage taking place in Kerr County. In my view, the market forces are remedying that situation through appropriate means, new construction or land zone for whatever is being built. They're not taking existing residential neighborhoods and retasking them to support higher density efforts. Larry Hunter, 1604 Main Street. So if there is no one else to speak to this, we'll close the public hearing at 4.50. Uh, any questions, any comments from commissioners? Sure, Drew, I have a question for you as to if there's a reason that we're, you're applying for a conditional use permit, is there any reason they would not apply for a zoning change to R1A since this, is, this property and the surrounding properties are all R1? Because it's zoned, because the entire neighborhood is zoned R1, uh, we don't recommend not necessarily spot zoning because it's all mm -hmm. residential districts. Okay. But 
rezoning individual lots would not be consistent with our zoning policy. The zoning code does allow the accessory dwelling unit in R1 with the conditional use permit um, so that so that they do have that opportunity if it if it fits. Uh, this is you do have your backup the site plan and the floor plan. This is the existing footprint of the home as Ms. Phillips mentioned just dividing it up into the smaller apartment in the main house. You can also see on the site plan they're providing or have plans to provide for four parking spaces which is required within the zoning code two parking spaces per unit. Uh, the zoning code does allow the stacking of those parking spaces. So you see two of them are, the two existing parking spaces are tandem front to back. The two additional parking spaces would be 90 degrees off the existing driveway um, in the front yard, essentially. Uh, staff recommends the following conditions for approval, that it be tied to the site plan, showing the parking configuration as seen. The maximum height, of course, is 35 feet standard in R1. The maximum area of the apartment could be 50% or less of the main home, which this does comply with. And they are required two spaces per unit, totaling four spaces, which they've shown they can, can meet if this is approved. With that, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. One question I guess I have, the parking, the two parking places that are in the front of the house, off to the side of the driveway, I would assume those are going to be wide enough because if you're coming in the driveway, you're going to have to swing. You're going to need more clearance to make that swing into those parking right. places, right? Mm -hmm. So we have additional footage to allow that to happen? Um, as drawn, they are 9 by 19 foot parking spaces. So that would be a standard parking space. Uh, do what? That's a standard? Standard parking space, correct. Uh, on in our in code Kerrville code yes nine foot wide by 19 deep is standard parking at commercial too mm -hmm. is there, I, I, I went to front I did not is there an alley I don't think I don't I don't believe so no I could I couldn't I went over there and looked at it myself I, it's really hard to tell what's behind what's in the back it's 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 yeah, you can kind of see it on the screen that property behind it actually fronts on uh, on the side on that side street there tidy. yes does it okay it has what Mul there, multiple units. Multiple units on the property that behind it that, it, again, faces that side street. There's a few houses like that in yeah. that neighborhood. So all this demolition you're showing in the front where it says demolish an existing concrete sidewalk and new gravel is indicated, that's all on property, right? Yes. You can see the solid line on the front is the property line. There's a pretty extensive parkway uh, from back of curb to the property line. Any other questions, guys, or comments? Well, is that additional gravel to be overflow parking? What's the purpose of the gravel between the building line and the sidewalk? To, to do for the parking. Okay, so that's so instead of pouring concrete, we were just going to gravel it. Okay. So the gravel is the additional parking. So it boils down to the parking space is pretty much between the sidewalk and almost to the structure itself. Am I reading that right? Yes. yes okay. Do, do you do you have? Can you put this up? I don't have it in here. here. I apologize. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, David. Uh, the the part the arrows are pointing to the red hatched right that's the parking that's what she's that's saying the parking right yeah right and the black is the an existing sidewalk is going to be removed and right and then that gray the is going to be gravel i can yeah but that'll be the entryway that they'll drive across to get on and then what's the no what's the material for the actual red hatched parking is it 
asphalt or? We were just going to use like granite or gravel to do hmm. on the side of the existing. So they're identical, it's just you got to color it. So part of that Colorization is, is just yeah. for showing where the parking is. That's correct. The existing concrete driveway and the additional gravel driveway. All right. Is the city okay with what's being shown as additional gravel area beyond what I'm reading as the property line? That'll actually have to check with engineering uh, because it is in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not able to answer that question. That'll be part of their permitting process. So this this is the entire parking for the whole st structure? Yes. And that uh, and setback is not an issue because this is grandfather? That's correct. So they're changing this, changing the parking, and it's still grandfathered in for no setback? For the structure, that's correct, because they're not changing the structure. So if they were to add on to the what they're looking at as the apartment, it would be required to meet setbacks or any major changes to it. But there is no setback requirement for the parking itself. So if this was ever to become a short-term lease, they don't have adequate parking, correct? If both dwellings were full. That's correct. Yeah. Because yeah, the parking, parking for the short-term rental is different than mm -hmm. single family and the accessory dwelling in it. Any other questions, guys? Any other comments? And when this is done, this conditional use permit, if it gets approved, this is done. The city is going to, the city's already approved the, the crushed rock and that's it, right? That's correct. And the, the Zoning Board of Adjustment a couple years ago did approve uh, crushed granite or something similar um, as a alternative paving surface. Okay. That's something, David? And then the the addition or the construction will require a building permit, and so they've prepared to do that as well. And that's when the fire marshal will review this for mm -hmm. eighty eight. Any eighty eight? Yep. Not for single family. Okay. If we have two vehicles parked here, how does the first vehicle get past the second vehicle if they have to get out? They does it? They would have to move both. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. So there's no specific designation on the parking, what parking spaces are for what part of these two dwellings, correct? No. Not, not unless the owner chooses to, but from a from a zoning standpoint, no, there would be no designation. Right now it's just one long skinny driveway. Right. You would have to move on. Anyway. So it still it still it still stays a single dwelling it just becomes two single dwellings right. is that what you're still saying? falls under the residential building code okay questions you just clears it up for me well do we have a motion i'll make a motion to approve the cp as presented you have a second we have a motion and a second all in favor all right. We'll move on. 3D, 716 Barnett Street. Zoning change from RT to C1, PZ2001-3. This is a public hearing consideration and action to recommend an ordinance to change from RT to C1 from residential transition to neighborhood commercial district on lot 5, lot 6, lot 7, Block F Cage Edition, generally located at 716 Barnett Street. With that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. My name is John Hewitt. My daughter has started a char uh, catering business that prepares charcuterie boards for wineries. 
and the wineries would like her to have a commercial kitchen to prepare those boxes. So what she does is she puts cheeses, in case you don't know what a charcuterie box is, it's cheeses, meats, and fruits. She puts them together. There's no cooking. She, we don't have an oven or a stove or anything like that. So she just puts them all together. Um, she will, she, she takes those boxes and delivers them to the winery. So no one's going to come into the neighborhood. There's no deliveries, no pickups, no traffic impacts. The commercial kitchen that what I would do to my office is I would put a larger refrigerator in there and I would put a three sink or a three compartment sink instead of a two compartment sink. And then I put a mop closet in. So those are the only changes. Uh, I don't see that it'll have any impact. Uh, she would do most of the packaging around four or five o'clock in the afternoon after I leave. Um, so that kind of summarizes it, what, what I'm interested in doing. Did you bring us a charcuterie? So I, is there, I should is have. Is there any charcuterie board benefits wanna, for you or us? I didn't want to bias your opinion. <laughs> I've had them, they're really good. Yeah. We're going to open the public hearing on this at 501. Public hearing is open. <coughs> we have any one to speak on this? Any? There are no callers. If we have none, we're going to close it. Okay, Drew. So Mr. Hugh mentioned, uh, currently is RT looking to go to C1 for the commercial kitchen. RT does not allow for a restaurant or any restaurant type use, so the commercial kitchen would not be permitted. Um, there's a zoning map you can see to the northwest of C2. To the west across Barnett Street is the uh, beginning of the downtown arts and culture district. Across Bar directly across Barnett is also RT, and then of course you have a strip of Earl Garrett of RT. This is within the strategic catalyst area number one for downtown arts and culture district. And here's a brief description of that. Uh, the first strategic cat catalyst area comprises the downtown core and the central business district of Kerrville. Um, looking at the place type distinctions, development should be oriented towards the river corridor and engaging with the adjacent businesses and structures. There should be a strong focus on redevelopment and catalyzing a renewed public interest in the area. All that being said, this is consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with zoning policies. Um, RT district, as we know it, is typically that buffer between the commercial and the adjacent residential. Uh, so this being just a small sliver of RT, it is not impacting that buffer district. We're actually going from C1 or C2 on City Baker. C1 is the neighborhood commercial district into RT. You still have two or three blocks of RT before you get to the neighborhood zoned R1A. As they go through their permitting process, if there's any parking changes that they'll need to take care of, that'll be part of the, the process. Uh, again, it's not really a retail business, it's just catering. Um, so there won't be any visitors to the property based on this use. Um, go through the health department, fire marshal, and building for all of the additions or remodel to the kitchen. That'll all be part of the building permit process. But that, staff recommends the case for approval. Be pleased to answer any questions. Any questions? It makes sense for that area. It's all commercial anyway. To me, it makes sense. My only question is, as it always is, when we change the zoning, it's fine what the existing owner plans on doing. Right. If this gets changed, if we change this to the to the C1. So the neighborhood commercial district um, is geared to be on the edge or within a neighborhood, actually. So it's very small scale. Uh, maximum square footage is 5,000 square feet for most uses. Um, no drive-through type uses. Okay. Um, again, really engaged with the neighborhood, not more of your general retail that's serving the general public coming and going. Um, C2 wouldn't necessarily be appropriate because it's not on the arterial or a collector. Um, and being on the edge of, although Earl Garrett is mostly commercial anyway, as, as a part of the RT district. I drove over and took a look at it. Right. Um, still part of that neighborhood because that RT neighborhood includes the commercial and the residential mix between there. So I think the C1 would still be an adequate fit if it weren't for the engineering office okay. and the catering business. That was my question. I have no other questions. If we do not have any other questions, can we get a motion? 
I'll make a motion to approve the zoning change as presented. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion passes. Opens up the charcuterie board. <laughs> Where, is, is there a sample that you perhaps bought? Yeah. It's done now, John. You could have brought something. <laughs> we wish you luck. All right, we're going to go to uh, 3E, 821 Robinson Avenue, conditional use permit for short-term rental, PZ2021-4. Consideration and action to recommend a resolution to allow the conditional use permit for a short-term rental on Lot 8, Block 1, Shriner High School Edition, more commonly known as 821 Robinson. With that, I'll turn over to the applicants. Hi guys, thanks for having us. I'm oh, so excited. Um, this is our first property here in Kerrville, and we picked Kerrville because we love it. So tell us who you are, please. What names? Names. Oh, I'm Aaron Treslow, and this is Tom Kent. We're finish line properties. We fell in love with Kerrville uh, from doing the Kerrville Triathlon. Every year we come, and every year I love it. And every year I come a second week, two weeks before the race. And I stay in the hotel, and I ride, and I run, and we love the trails. And we fell in love with it here, and that's why we decided to buy a property here, turn it into a short-term rental, because we want to show everybody what Kerrville is. Kerrville is the star of the show. Our STR is just, you know, a side actor. And hopefully it's going to be gorgeous and beautiful and really represent everything in Texas, in Kerrville. And... Um, I don't think I was going to be nervous, <laughs> but we're really excited. And we're, my goal is to partner with the businesses. Like we love PAX. We want to have PAX coffee house coffee in our SDR. We want to partner with Hill Country Charcuterie and we want to work with uh, Great Juice and send people to the restaurants. We want people to go see Val at Humble Fork to learn about the ghosts in that building because it's pretty cool. She's an amazing uh, waitress there. So we've learned so much being here that we just, we want to share it. We want to share all of it and we're really excited. And uh, just thank you for having us. Do you have anything to add? How can I help that? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to open up the public hearing and see if we have anybody to speak on this. We'll open up the public hearing at 508. Do we have any callers? We have no callers. Someone to speak? We actually, um, Step up, ma'am. Right, Tell us who you are, where you live. We own 808 Tyvee, which is behind this house, and I'd like to know exactly what they're planning on doing with this property so that it doesn't impact the long-term single-family residences in that area. Our house is actually a rental unit. But it's a single family rooting unit. It's been that way for umpteen years. Our house is actually over on uh, Harper, near Harper. But anyway, so that's my question. What exactly are you planning to do with this particular house? Not your grand scheme of what you want to do for Kerrville with this particular house. I think we can get those questions answered. Okay. <coughs> do you want to address that or you want to let. So this is. A two bedroom house, it was a two bedroom, one bath. We converted it to two two. It's just going to be a short term rental, possibly a mid term rental. That means people will basically come for the weekend and we will oversee it and they will leave. They're going to come, they're going to spend money, they're going to run on the path, they're going to rent kayaks, they're going to go to the wineries, they're going to go to the restaurants, they're going to put money into the city. That's the only thing we have plans for this house. This is our house, this is our baby, and we just want to share it. It's, it's at a price point that's going to bring in people with money and people who take care of their, the surroundings and have the ability to pay for $250 a night hotels and spaces. And that's it. Simple. You anticipate your average stay time in the house to be? Three nights. Three nights. And I will be personally overseeing the turnovers. Well, you have a maximum. You, I assume you have to have a maximum number. It's a short-term rental, correct? Yes. Under 30 days is considered short. I don't 
necessarily want somebody in there for 30 days because I want my eyes on the property every week. I guess you said it, but you you live here now? I don't, but I hope to soon. <laughs> we are Where do you live now? Uh, we are in Austin, North Austin. Um, I am continually looking for properties, second property that I can move into here and continue taking care of the space easier than driving two hours every time. So you will be the basically the manager of the property? Yes. I mean, we own it together, okay. but I am what you would call the host. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the host manager. Yeah. Ma'am, does that answer your question? Yes. I'm happy to talk to you afterwards as well. Well, uh, uh, I, I guess to expand on what you're asking is what physical changes are you going to make to the house? It's under, you, you have workmen there now. Right. And you're painting and cleaning and right. doing whatever. Putting in a new driveway, I can see. No. We weren't planning, we weren't planning on any driveway. I mean, you have some work going on on the side of the house there? No, we have we have the main house, uh -huh. which we just painted. Okay, we've put a lot of money into this house, and then we have a shed in the back okay. that garage. is a, we call it a garage, a shed, barn, whatever, and um, we've painted that as well, and we're going to clear it out eventually and leave it as an open space. Maybe put a ping pong table in there, but that's it. Yeah. Right. The what else? There's tile going on now, so maybe that's what you saw the tile. Tiling. Work. Okay. Because all the both baths are being retiled as we speak. Um, there's still three finished floors. Yep. And then I'm going to do something like some sort of crushed gravel, it's like a little patio in the back area to be an outdoor space. Landscaping. To the side of the garage, but not. So it's going to maintain its residential look. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. there's a new fence to go into, but I can't yeah. get a fence. Well, there won't be any signage or anything like that. We're not what, looking to do that. What's the fencing on the back side between the? Your neighbors. Currently, it's a six foot wooden privacy fence. We're going to replace it with a similar, but maybe a little. Maybe horizontal. Instead horizontal of vertical. instead of vertical privacy fence. At six, six foot? foot? Yeah. I have to get a permit for that, right? I'm pretty, right. Yes, anything over 30 inches. Even replacing, Even replacing, replacing the current fence? I believe so. Okay. okay. I mean, it's, 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 a, me. it's, a, it's <laughs> a, I think it's, it's a minimal expense for the permit. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah if, you're, if you're replacing the entire fence, it does require a permit. Okay. okay. Uh, We've been through the process before because we permitted all the work we've already done. Yeah. Okay, and the parking. Yeah. How many, what, how many and where? And it's how many a two bedrooms, so two plus one for the manager, and there's a long duck driveway on the side, including the garage, which could be used. Is that one in the front yard, too, the, the new no, one? There's no. What, what is this indication? I can't see that. <laughs> Just the uh, long driveway on. on the left side. It's yeah, a long driveway is on yeah, it's the very long driveway. It's yeah. a very long driveway. It's the whole length of the house all the way to that garage in the back. Yeah. Uh, there is no, yeah, there's a little. So what's the, is that easement or something? Like, oh, north uh, corner? What is it? What is this right here? Yeah. That's the electric line. That's a drop? Yeah. Just a little bit of dimension. Yeah. So this is all, all yard on this side. Okay. And, and same yeah. thing? This, yeah. Same thing here. This is a driveway. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I just want to. Yeah, the two diagonals are using electric drops. Okay. Very well. Why two drops? Uh, this one goes to Jager. It's going over the driveway. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Okay. Thanks, Jim. So when someone okay. occupies this, someone comes in and rents it, it's it's not two or three different people renting. It's one person renting, correct? It'll be, right. called, it'll be one renter. It's I mean, they could have two, two people with them, but it's, yes, yeah. it's, yeah. okay. We're not having multiple subgroups come in. Okay. Like that. Any other questions? Is there anything at this time that the city will have to consider when making the assumption that the auxiliary building would probably be turned into a sleeping space, which would create a new bedroom and additional parking on site? Does that need to be considered now or at a later date? That'd be at a later date. Okay. We would have to go through, go through the building permit process and. Uh, well, this conditional use permit doesn't cover adding additional building sleeping space, correct? We're not looking right. to do that. So it'd be tied to the tied to the site plan and proposal as that is an exception. Okay. okay. It's unconditioned space right now, so. A lot of work. Terrible to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any other questions? If you don't have any other questions, I'll take a motion. Let me go through our conditions real quick. Okay. Go through the conditions. Uh, 
the uh, our typical short-term rental conditions, uh, we have updated these as we've kind of learned some new things through um, our community and other communities. Uh, we do require a guest notification to be posted on the property. Um, that'll be part of the resolution that just basically kind of a good neighbor notice. Um, you are reminding the guests that they are in a single family neighborhood. Act accordingly, no noise, complaints, parking problems. Um, you should be parking on the property, not on the street. Dispose of trash in appropriate locations and receptacles. Um, they are required to pay occupancy tax, just like a hotel, because it is short-term use. And so they'll have to go through our finance department and set that account up and pay those taxes. If they choose to have signage, this signage section is actually consistent with a home occupation, uh, limited to, um, excuse me, I'm trying to find the area there. One non-eliminated on-site sign. Yeah, up to six square feet total if it's mounted on the building. Minimum off-street parking is one space per bedroom plus one for the off-site manager. Again, that long driveway, all, all tandem, but that long, long driveway does account for that. Correct. The maximum occupancy, this is a new, new condition. Based on the building code requirements, maximum occupancy is 10 for any short-term rental. Obviously, a two-bedroom, that's going to be a little tight. Um, the owners can certainly require a, a lower occupancy, as you all are familiar with some of the short-term rental. Most of them do give you a maximum mm -hmm. occupancy on the rental agreement. From the city code, that's, that number is going to be a maximum of 10. Um, again, two-bedroom, I don't know if you could fit 10 in there. but um, And then, of course, any other zoning regulations are still subject to that approval. With that, I'd be pleased to answer any further questions. Anything else, guys? If not, I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion to approve the conditional use permit. We have second. Second. We have second. A motion is second. All in favor, raise your hand. This motion passes. Good luck. Thank you, Thank you for, consider, for considering Kerrville. It's a great place. We adore it. I already know more people here than I do in Austin. And get to know your neighbors down there. I know. They'll I have some that. concerns as well. All right, Drew, do we have any staff reports? Just one more last chance. We're going to advertise that we did have updated to the 2018 building codes. Building code, residential code, fire code, mechanical, plumbing, electrical. I'm missing one. There's pools and spas and existing building code. Um, those were effective February 9th, and that did include the fence permit. Um, so that is a new requirement for Kerrville to any fence over 30 inches requires a building permit. Um, so this property, and to the question that was asked, if they're repairing more than 50% of the fence, then it requires a permit. If it's just small repairs or a section or two, then it does not require a permit and it can be replaced. Uh, but that's consistent with building remodels. Uh, there's some limitations on how the code applies if it's more than 50% or less being brought up to code. So. I think that'd be the last time we could get that public announcement out. <laughs> Trying to make sure we're hitting everyone we can. Uh, we've also met with the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, we did some public education through social media or our website. We'll continue pushing that out just so that the community knows. We've sent a notice out to all registered contractors that were up, updated the codes and the new fencing requirements. So trying to get the notice out as best we can since we've made some pretty big changes. Big changes to get up to the 2018 code. They're not really significant impacts on the building code, but so. Progress. Progress. That's, what, that's the goal. So we will have we will have a meeting. April 1st. So our next meeting is April 1st. Yes, that is correct. Hmm. We're fooling? <laughs> I, bet, I bet we can have some fun with it. <laughs> All right. We stand adjourned at 520. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.